it's Nate here from Geek Bomb, and today for Rack Your Brains we're doing something special. Now this week is Science Week, so for the next five days I'm going to be releasing five videos based on questions that you guys want answered. Let's get started with an interesting one. So one of the first things that we were asked is what are the theories on interdimensional travel? Now, I actually had quite a lot of fun researching this. Now, there is something called the interdimensional hypothesis, which is a hypothesis that is used to explain the existence of other forms of life. The interdimensional hypothesis, or IDH, is a hypothesis which is used to explain the occurrences of UFOs. It is the alternative to the extraterrestrial hypothesis, which is also used to try and explain the same thing. The extraterrestrial hypothesis, or ETH, is used to explain the occurrences of UFOs and life on other planets. Because of the magnitude of space and the limitations of our conventional mathematics, there is actually no way to fathom any faster than light travel, so travelling between the stars isn't realistic. Whereas the interdimensional hypothesis, or IDH, says that UFOs are actually not craft, but devices which are used to travel in between dimensions. This is also used to explain why UFOs can suddenly appear and disappear on radar. That is not the only concept that is out there which is used to try and take into consideration multiple dimensions. You also have the string theory, or as it is sometimes known as the theory of everything. This theory also takes into consideration the multiple dimensions and that there could be alternative life forms and physics that we just cannot fathom. Unfortunately, we cannot detect it. And string theory has also sometimes been called as a simple mathematical fantasy. While also having a look around and trying to do some research for this question, I also found that there are some interesting statements out there and that humans can only see, hear and detect certain stimuli within particular ranges. So there's potentially other forms of life out there that humans just haven't evolved to be able to detect. Along with this question of trying to detect things that may not be there, I'm also going to address another question that was asked of me, and that is, what is dark matter, and how do we know that it exists if we can't detect it? <laughs> Thanks for giving me some easy ones this week, guys. Doing research for dark matter was actually really, really hard, as we know a lot of what it's not instead of what it actually is. Now, a theoretical model of the universe was composed and put together of what the universe was made of, and they eventually came to the conclusion that the universe is comprised of about 68% dark energy, 27% dark matter, and the rest of it is matter. So everything that we can visibly see is only that 5%. Dark matter has been given this 27% number because in the 50s, through the observations of galaxies and stars and how they interacted with each other, we came to the conclusion that there was something there that we couldn't see with the naked eye. Now, we don't know what it is, but we definitely know what it is not. We know that this dark matter isn't in the form of stars, black holes, or clouds because we know how these three different things interact with radiation around them. We also know that it isn't in the form of antimatter because when antimatter and matter annihilate together, they actually emit a unique gamma radiation which can be detected. As you can see, it's actually really, really hard to detect something that doesn't emit any form of energy or light. So yes, it is really hard to detect dark matter, but there is some evidence to support that there is something existing there, and this was done through observations of spiral galaxies in the 50s. Explaining one of the observations is going to be quite difficult, so I'm going to use a little bit of a metaphor. Now, if you're cleaning up in the kitchen or in the bathtub and you pull out the plug, you watch the soap suds spiral around the drain. You can potentially see that the soap suds that are around, that are further away from the drain, are actually moving slower than that of the soap suds that are closer to the drain. We had similar ideas of this is what was going to be happening when we observed spiral galaxies, but in fact we found that the stars at the centre of the galaxy and stars at the most outer rims of the galaxy were moving at the same velocity. This, along with the idea that stars in those galaxies have enough velocity that the galaxies should just fly apart, suggests that there is some undetectable matter that is applying enough gravity to be able to keep those stars in a fixed position. It is this undetectable matter that was given the name Dark Matter. That's it for today, guys. I hope I've answered those questions sufficiently enough. Now tune in tomorrow where we answer another one of the questions that you've asked. I'm Nate, and I hope I've racked your brains.